Flag Race is one of the three challenges that make up a guild's Noblesse skills. It consists of completing three laps as fast as possible on one of three different maps that cycle between each other weekly. It tests the very basics of your character control as you navigate through these maps with simple movements, jumps, and abilities like a high jump and a dash. When given enough time, the movement you practice in Flag Race can nudge into useful territory when challenging bosses. Three to four weeks ago, I created two Flag Race guides that covered the Daylight and the Sunset Race. And with the disconnection bug fixed, we'll finally be taking a look at the last of the three flag race maps. Today I'll be showing you how I navigate the night race, and how I go about getting a perfect score on this map, which is to complete all three laps in less than 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Now originally the night race and the morning race were, for the most part, the same map, however this is no longer going to be the case. There are elements on this map that can be related back to the sunset and daylight races, but for the race as a whole, it's all brand new, and even adds some new obstacles that we need to learn to traverse. Where the daylight race tested your consistency, and the sunset race tested your patience, the night race is made to test both of these put together, and it's often regarded as the hardest of the three maps to get a perfect score on. A couple of things before we get started. Regarding my flag race guides, the objective of these videos are to hopefully arm you with the knowledge of how to race on these maps. In the end, watching flag race guides and VODs will only help you so far, and the only way you're going to improve is by practicing it yourself and getting first-hand experience. Additionally, these guides are made to show you what I believe is the bare minimum of what you will need to be able to do in order to get a perfect score. You don't necessarily have to copy my style, but rather use it as a basis and adjust certain movements to fit your own style of flag racing. Finally, there are shortcuts and tricks that can save you a second or two over the course of the entire race. Personally, I don't like showcasing these shortcuts because most of them aren't beginner-friendly at all, but I'll make an exception for one specific trick on this map. Now, since this is a new map, let's quickly take a look at the ability layout. This map has two areas where you can use your high jump and two areas where you can use your dash. Additionally, there are two areas where you can use your rally on, but for this guide, I'll be using it at the start of each lap. Snowshoes are recommended toggled on for majority of the race, but you want them toggled off for your first high jump to take advantage of momentum carrying. When the race begins, we're going to immediately start running up the hill. Toggling on snowshoes for the start here is optional, but you're going to want them off relatively quickly. This is also the first area you have the option of using your rally on. It will speed up the process of running up the hill. Hop down to the bottom area once you reach the top of the hill. If you want to line up a jump here to save you some time, you can use this little dent in the snow as a reference point. Alternatively, you could just walk off. You won't be losing that much time by not jumping. Now, if you did toggle on snowshoes for the start, you're going to want to toggle them off for the next jump. This is where we're going to be using our first high jump of the race. This iceberg on our right is actually a hidden boost pad, and we're going to time our high jump with when we land on the iceberg in order to launch ourselves past the set of stairs. The base of this tree can be used as a reference point for where you should start your initial jump. Once you land on the ground, immediately immediately tap your high jump. If you use it too late or have snowshoes on, you won't have enough momentum to clear the stairs. When performed correctly, you'll fly right past the stairs grabbing the cooldown star and landing on a slope where you'll time another jump to get past the first mini pit. And that's practically it for the non-snowshoe segment. The rest of this race can be done in snowshoes, but remember, adjust to your preference. Jumping over the next mini pit, you'll be running up on yet another hill that looks just like the start of the race, but this time there's a little wall in the middle. This is where you're going to be using your first dash. Now you want to be a bit careful with where you actually use the dash on this hill. Time it slightly off and you'll get stopped by the wall. Here are two spots that you can use the dash that will get you past the wall. After this, a simple jump will take you past the pit. Next, you'll be coming up on a set of stairs, and for those of you who figured out how to short hop, you know what to do. The fastest way to traverse this will be two full distance hops followed by a short hop, then one more full hop. You can hold your jump key for the first two jumps, letting go of your arrow keys to perform the short hop for jump number three. As for the last jump, you'll need to re-input your arrow key along with re-inputting your jump key as well. Following the stairs, you'll see this boost pad, and you're going to want to jump WITH the boost pad in order to grab onto a rope to climb up to the next section. You can either jump on your own timing, or from performing the last jump on the stairs, you can continue holding down your jump key, which will automatically buffer a jump as soon as you hit the ground. Once you get launched from the boost pad, immediately start holding up to grab the first rope you can. Now, once you come to the top of the ropes, you're going to encounter this little platforming area. And just a quick warning for this area and the one ahead of this, these two areas have disappearing platforms. Stand on any of these platforms for anything more than a second and you'll be dropped. 
To get past this area efficiently, position slightly left of this iceberg once you climb the ropes. Perform two default jumps followed by a left hop and a right hop in order to continue upwards. Now you don't have to copy my style here, it's just my personal preference. You can perform this part however you wish, so long as you make it near the top, you can use your second high jump of the race to reach the top. Moving past the first set of disappearing platforms, we reach the second set, this time with flame traps. Now as I mentioned before, these platforms are timed to disappear after one second of being stood on, and as you make your way through this area, you may be forced to wait out flame traps in order to not fall all the way down. But there is good news. Sort of. Along with a platform at the start that doesn't disappear, there are also two platforms that are close enough height-wise that a default jump can be used. You'll need to adjust your routing based on if you think you have the timing for the flame traps or not. In this clip, you can see that I don't have good timing with the flame traps, so instead of brute forcing my way through, I decide to adjust my routing slightly by performing a default jump in order to buy time for the flame trap to go off so I can get through it flawlessly. Additionally, this area has two different routes that you can take to progress past this, either by heading through the main or by going above it. I'll explain both, starting with the one most players will use, which is the maze route. After navigating past the platform sets, you're going to want to hit this boost pad with a jump. Practically the exact same thing as you did with the earlier boost pad. Doing so will send you into the maze, hitting the other two boost pads along the way, and by holding down your jump key through this entire process, you'll end up at the end of the maze. After which, it's just a couple hops to the next area, along with waiting out a flame trap. Now, let's talk about the alternate route that you can take, which I've decided to call the thorn route. With this route, you're going to be performing something called a thorn jump, or a spike jump, or whatever you want to call it. You can see these tiny spikes on the edge of these two platforms, and if touched, you'll take knockback. The objective here is to combine the knockback from the thorns with a jump in order to gain some distance in order to land on the next platform. For the first thorn jump, you can use the branches on the bush as a reference point as to where you should perform your initial jump. As for the second one, you can either gauge your initial jump distance by yourself, or line up your initial jump with the icicle hanging below. Following these two thorn jumps, you can just jump off or run off to get back on track. Now you're actually not saving much time by taking one route over the other. The thorn jump route might be slightly faster by a quarter of a second due to the fact that you were forced to wait out a flame trap if you took the maze route, but in the grand scheme of things, the difference between these two routes is not big enough to cause any concern. Hopefully. Try both of the routes first and pick whichever one you feel more comfortable with. Carrying on to the next area, you'll come up on yet another hill, and this is where you're going to be using your second dash of the lap. Continuing onwards, it's just a couple more jumps, followed by one more thorn jump and a boost pad that will take you to the end platforms. Just as your character starts overlapping the bush, or if your character is just in front of the branches, you can perform your initial jump. This will be followed by a boost pad that will send you straight to the end platforms that are just before the finish line. And just like with the last few boost pads, you're going to be timing one last jump with it. You can jump with your own approach to this, or if you want consistency, you can continue holding your jump key from the initial thorn jump. After this, it's just a couple more jumps to the end portal. Congratulations you've completed a lap. Now, in my opinion, compared to the Daylight and the Sunset race, this race is definitely the hardest one, and not just because it's new. If you are to run this race to the bare minimum without any mistakes, you'll have a lap time of about 49 seconds, which is somewhat tight for timing over the course of three laps. But there is one trick that can be used to give you a couple more seconds to work with, the last boost pad that you take to reach the end platforms. Based on where you perform your jump with the boost pad, you can land on any of these platforms. Normally, when holding the jump key from the initial thorn jump, you'll land about six or seven jumps before the end portal. But if you line this jump very precisely, you can actually land four or even three jumps before the end portal. To perform this shortcut, you're going to want to time your jump for the right side of the boost pad. The timing is pretty tight if you just try to tap it, so as a reference point for an initial jump, you can line your jump up with this little crevice on the bottom of the platform. When performed perfectly, this can easily shave off 6 to 7 seconds over the course of the entire race. But remember, all shortcuts have a risk to them. And this one just so happens to be that if you're slightly off with any part of this trick, well, you'll be set back even further. Regardless, it's up to you how you race. Practice mode exists. Out of all the things that you do in MapleStory, one of the biggest factors when it comes to playing the game is movement of your character. To me, jump quests like Flag Race work as a training ground for the 5 most basic actions in the entire game, the four directional keys and the jump key. And if you can't handle simple movements with confidence, then you won't be able to control much beyond that. 